Hi, everybody. This is Rachel Nosen, the greatest ear hustle listener of all time. The following episode of Ear Hustle contains language that may not be suitable for all listeners. Discretion is advised. Are you voting? Nah, I ain't gonna vote. What you mean you ain't gonna vote? How you just gonna say all that shit and then say, no, nah, I ain't gonna vote? I ain't registered yet. I'm out Hey, Erlon. What up, Er? You know what this is? What? Okay, I'm super excited. This is our first ever Ear Hustle PSA also known as a public service announcement. Fuck yeah, nice. <laughs> We're about to tell Ear Hustle listeners to vote. And E, this election is a big deal for you. You want to tell people why? Yes, <laughs> I just got off parole. And fucking incredible. You know what's happening this November, right? Tell me about it. It will be the first time in my whole life I've been able to vote. So when I found out my homeboy Donut wasn't registered, and he's been out five years and he just got off parole 10 months ago. What'd you do? I got on his ass about that shit. <laughs> I got off parole Wednesday. I registered that night. How can I register? Help me register. I'm, I'm gonna give you the link right now. We, we finna register this fool. Register that man. Man, indubitably. There we go. That's you can go to vote.gov to find out more about voting and to register. It takes five minutes. Only five minutes. I just did the shit. Are you a registered voter now, my brother? So now, now you can go vote for who you gonna vote for, whoever that is. That's your, your preference. Appreciate that, man. It's always a blessing, man. All right, let's get to this week's episode. Everybody pulling out their stuff. You ready? Do, do anybody need to do a wipe down? Yeah, I do. Y'all you you ready? Yeah. Five, four, Three, two, two, one, one and a half. I think it's cooked One. Time. All right, it's on y'all. Right. Right. It is on. We have been waiting a long time for this, Erlon. We've been dreaming of this since season one. The first annual. Annual? Yeah, why not? All right. The first annual Ear Hustle cook-off. Four competitors. All former residents of California prisons. Bring their inside cooking skills outside. Four guys with years of experience cooking meals inside their prison cells. Using only stuff you can get your hands on in prison. They're going to replicate those meals outside. And we got a celebrity judge to help us pick a winner. Hot pots, ramen noodles. Grit, determination, prison ingenuity. Uh, some undercooked fish? You had to go there, Nigel. <laughs> you know I did. I'm Nigel Poor. And I'm the new voter on the block, Erline Woods. And this is Ear Hustle from PRX's Radiotopia. Reverend Oakland, we've got Jonathan. He's running away really quickly, like he doesn't, doesn't want me to record him anymore. A few days before the contest, we went grocery shopping with two of our four contestants to collect some of the ingredients they'd need to make their meals. Our first contestant, Jonathan Chu, he was in San Quentin with you. Yeah, he was a cook in there too. He used to get his cook on. Like on Saturdays, while most guys were out in the yard, he would stay in the cell cooking for himself and his cell. So industrious. Trip. He'd be in the back of his cell with his mattress rolled back and he'd use the bunk for cooking, right? Mm -hmm. Using his toilet as a seat, leaned over, cutting and cooking on his bunk. That is quite a visual. I learned how to cook by my mom, and when I was incarcerated, we'd all be eating spreads, and I'd be missing my own food, so I, I found a way to actually just cook the food that I, I ate as a child. Jonathan mentions a spread, so can you explain that, please? A spread is like when a group of guys come together, each one of them have some food. You know, you usually spread it out over a big table and get your, get your grub on. And there's a lot of extracurricular cooking in prison, right? I mean, aside from those three meals that you get in chow. <laughs> <laughs> you can call them meals. Yeah, that food sucks. In fact, some guys, if you're a real baller, do not eat or step foot in the cafeteria at all. And like Chu, a lot of guys have figured out how to turn their cells into kitchens. And of course, they've got tools. Chief among them is the hot pot. Yeah, like something you use for boiling water. But Erlan, I've also heard rumors about 
George Foreman grills back there in the cells. Shh. I've used that grill. Really? <laughs> that George Foreman grill to get you fat. <laughs> you said it, not me. So guys really perfect their cooking techniques, and then they can show them off at the next spread. And you do not want your reputation tarnished by making a bad spread. It's like a bad restaurant review. It's a wrap. <laughs> so for our first annual Ear Hustle Cook-Off, each of our four contestants had $30 to spend. They could only buy things that would have been available to them in prison. So, E, let's talk about where incarcerated people get ingredients. Well, there's a canteen. And the canteen is basically the store that's inside the prison where guys can shop, I think it's once a month. Once a month, right. Mm -hmm. And you're able to get your uh, noodles, your rice, your meats, your pouches, your snack food. Or you can get things through packages, items that are sent from the outside. A friend or family member can order food from a vendor and have that delivered to you. And packages happen four times a year. Right, quarterly. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you had a friend or a hookup in the kitchen. Now that's the good shit. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't like the way the chicken is prepared in the kitchen. I'll get it raw from one of my partners that's a kitchen worker. Mm. Then I can fry it. I can boil it. I can do whatever I want to do with it. Oof. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. Now... Back to our two contestants. The scene at Food Max was crazy. And Jonathan Chu is a gentle soul. And he kept letting other folks take the shopping carts. I told you to get in there. Well, it's a good thing we're not doing it in a supermarket sweep because I'd be losing. I know. I was just saying, what does it say about your competitive spirit? I know, right? While Chu was futzing around by the shopping carts, Adam Garcia, one of the other contestants, was already in the aisles, filling up his cart with ingredients for a special tamale. Uh, let's see, we got condiments. Here we go. I'm definitely gonna have to come down here. Got to be with the parsley, man. It's got to be. Bam, 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 bam. So let's see. I got my seasonings. I got that. I got the mixture. I got the beans. I got the rice. He was budgeting. So so far, we're at 20.85. He was thinking strategically. I know I'm going to need jalapenos, right? Okay. As well as the vinegar in here, too. Nah, this dude came to win. Oh, clearly. Because I have the best recipes in the world, so uh, prepare to be off. You know, my namesake is awesome, Adam. You know, and everything I do awesomely, nothing trumps awesome. So that's why I'm going to win. How's it going over there with Jonathan, Natch? Ooh, busted, busted. We got distracted talking about the Great British Bake Off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is, yeah. Do you love that show? I love that show. Hey, I love it too so much. Everybody's so nice. Like everybody's so like helpful. Like if one person fails, like they go on and help them. All right, so we're at twenty-two seventy, huh? Okay. We're at twenty-two seventy. Twenty minutes after we got the food, Max, Awesome Adam was already checking out. Use pin pad to complete transaction. And nice, helpful British Bake Off Jonathan. Ugh, he's struggling. Uh, I'm looking for my my regular go-to. Nope, oh, that's not it. Three, five, eight, ten, fifteen. Make calculate. Fifteen dollars, and you only have four things. Five. My name is Jasmine Boxley, and my loved one is located at Calipatria State Prison. So my name is J.C. Carrillo. My husband is currently incarcerated at Solano State Prison. My name is Emily Jarvis, and my husband was incarcerated for 13 and a half years. My name is Alicia Montero. My husband, Anthony, is serving time at California Medical Facility in Vacaville. And this is his most recent um, quarterly package list. He loves seasoning because he loves to cook. So some of the seasonings that I purchased him is Mrs. Dash Southwest Chipotle Seasoning, Mrs. Dash Fiesta Lime Seasoning, four ranch salad dressing packets, beef flavored ramen, chicken flavored ramen, 40 pack of Hawaiian punch drink mix, two boxes of fruit rolls cereal, one box of pop tart cereal, ass kicking popcorn ghost pepper, that's what it's called.
out of all the guys I ever met in prison, mm-hmm. there's one who is a true cooking legend, Nige. Oh, yeah. Who's that? Al King. What this guy can cook in his cell, you would not believe it. Like what? So it's this one meal he hooked up for me, Mm -hmm. and it deals with Chinese sausages and egg noodles and sweet and sour sauce and onions. The expression on your face when you're talking about him says it all. I don't miss prison, but I do miss his food. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good dishes, uh, the simple to make is the uh, clam linguine. It's my interpretation of clam linguine. You take the seashell pasta that you get 79 cents a bag, you boil it, Strain it, throw it in a bowl, put some garlic powder, some salt and pepper, and then you put a couple of pouches of um, smoked clams in there with some white cheese. I prefer mozzarella, but provolone will do. And the, the hot pasta will melt the cheese and coat it. And then just before you plate it, when after you plate it up and serve it, you drizzle it with a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese and some extra virgin olive oil. Did you come up with that one, or you got that one off of a cook show? I watched Lydia, that Italian lady that comes on PBS, and I saw her do it. And then when I see people on TV doing stuff, I look at what they're doing and how they're doing it, and then I say, oh, I could do that. So, you know, I can't get the fresh clams. She had the clams with the shells open. Well, I don't have that, but I can get clams. And so... I can get pasta, I can get extra virgin olive oil, I can get mozzarella and provolone cheese, and I can get Parmesan cheese. And I have salt and pepper and everything else. So I, I do, I interpret it and, and, and make it out of what's accessible to me. And it's very good. Everything is good, it seems. Hello. You ready? Are you ready to start? Yellow round. Yeah. Sounds laid down by the underground. A few days later, <laughs> we were ready to cook. So, everybody, welcome to the great Your Hustle Cook Off. We're super excited about this. We've been talking about doing this for a while. So, thanks for participating. We've met two of the contestants already Awesome Adam and British Bake Off Jonathan. That leaves two more. Yep. First up, Jason, up a.k.a. Turtle. Jason. Yes. <laughs> Give us a few adjectives to describe yourself. I am joyful, I am very appreciative, and I am thoughtful. Okay. And you're going to bring all that to your cooking? Yes. (laughs) And with a little love, you know. Listeners might remember Jason from the Tell Chrissy I Love Her episode at the end of season four. In that story, he talked about this very unlikely friendship he has with a woman named Christy and her husband Tom. And Christy... She can bake. So Jason might be getting some good skills from her. And that left one last contestant in our cook-off. And last but never least, how did the producer get in the show? We're going to have to talk about that one. Like like he was not on the roster. (laughs) Ear Hustle producer and former resident of San Quentin, John Yaya Johnson. The only thing I know he cooked in prison was oatmeal. You didn't read the Bon Appetit article? No, I did not. So this contestant has actually been featured in Bon Appetit, a foodie magazine, for the recipe I believe he's going to cook today. So he might have a competitive edge, actually. Still don't know how this dude got in there. Really, we had to spice things up. Stir up the hot pot a bit, huh? (laughs) Exactly. Bring in our own special ringer. And right from the get-go, Yaya set his sights on Awesome Adam. You know, I see he got his camouflage on, his military fatigue. He's out for the hunt right now. But uh, I'm not going down without a fight. And I think without a doubt that I'm going to win this food competition because I'm the best here. Um, All right, now let's kick this off. Where are we starting at now? Let me just describe the setup for everybody. We set up four tables in the parking lot in front of your studio down by the water in Hunters Point, San Francisco. Yep, and Erlon, we ran so many extension cords to power those hot pots. It was insane. And we all had to cross our fingers that we wouldn't blow fuses. We should say a bit more about these hot pots, Nige. Oh, yeah. We wanted a very specific model. Yes, the West Bend Metal Hot Pot. Mm Mm-hmm. This used to be the kind of hot pot you could buy inside. They were the shit. At some point, the corrections department outlawed them. But if you had one, you could keep it. Right. So, of course, 
they became super valuable. Mm -hmm. Like you could probably sell one in there for like 300, 400 bucks. No shit. Hell yeah. So everybody got a hot pot, a gallon of water, foil containers. A plastic bowl, plastic spoon, two serrated plastic knives, gloves, hand sanitizer, and plastic bags. And with that, they were off. The four contestants had one hour to prep before our celebrity judge arrived. Well, everybody putting their shit together, Adam is on the move. Yeah. What are you doing, Adam? Well, knowing that we had to be creative and trying to get masa. The real challenge of making a tamale in prison is getting that outer layer of corn to come out right. Because masa, the corn flour, is pretty much unavailable. Some people will do this dish while using uh, potato chips, but what I found is that the potato chips, they break down easy, so it's more like a, uh, a soft burrito. But, uh, and what Adam learned, figured out is that with a lot of work... Yeah, I mean, it took him like an hour. You can break tortillas down into a fine powder, but you still need another ingredient, a binding agent, to get the crumbs to stick together. And Adam had a hustle for that too. Ramen noodles. What I find is if I break up a soup into almost like powder-like consistency and I add that to my mix, that is the starch that helps bind the masa to make it actually uh, movable. These ain't. Yeah, right? This dude know his stuff. This was actually one of the last meals that I cooked before coming home. I knew that the week leading up to me going home, all my friends were going to be cooking for me and really showing their love, but I knew this was an opportunity for me to kind of just thank a lot of the people who were actually a part of me getting home. Yaya was also looking pretty good. Describe what you're making. So what I'm making today is a curry pepper steak over rice dish. And I'm going to incorporate mushrooms, purple onions, jalapenos, fresh bell peppers. I'm going to make a curry gravy. It's going to have a sweet and sour consistency to it. Something's starting to smell good. When you were inside, what was like the prized ingredient to get that was really hard to get? Fresh vegetables for me. So how'd you get them? Out the kitchen. I have kitchen worker friends who work there that would bring them back. And what could you get? Uh, bell peppers, uh, fresh jalapenos. On good days, you can get garlic, raw garlic. Mm. And I love that, so. I used to make this inside, and one of the reasons why I did is because I had a, a nostalgic connection with the dish when I was growing up. My mother loved cooking pepper steak. But I love using red bell peppers because it makes the dish a lot more zestier. And then when you consider the drabness of prison society in and of itself, the concrete, the bars, and all of that different stuff, I wanted to make a more colorful dish in order to brighten up, one, my day, and other individuals who actually partook in the dish as well. A real spread is multiple dishes. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own little recipe. Everybody got their own certain little thing, the way that they mix up things. This is Christopher Lewis, AKA Donut. I met Christopher in 2011 at San Quentin. We may have burritos. We're gonna have a, a bean and chili and, and noodle dish. And then we're gonna have a seafood dish for those that don't eat meat. And the seafood will consist of tuna, oysters, mackerel. I don't eat pickles. You know, and I remember one day I gave Baby Rock like $20, $30 one day. And this nigga made a spread one time and, 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 and pickles was all on the top of the motherfucker and destroyed my whole meal. And I never wanted to eat with him again. I'm serious. Man, I remember that shit. That nigga came, he was pissed. And I just knew he knew I didn't eat that shit, homie. And he wasn't going to put that shit up in there, but he put that shit up in there anyway and killed my whole meal. I put like $30 in that shit, homie, just on the strength. And Chuki Chu. So what are you making today? I was making dumplings because that's actually what I, my mom used to make as, uh, for me as a child. So, and it was be a whole day thing too. When I you know, went to prison, um, basically you know, what they serve you is pretty much American food or what they think is also Chinese food or Mexican food or whatever. And because you know, I learned how to cook with my mom, I, I figured I can like, bring my own thing and I can share my food with people. And that's you know, my expression of like, showing that I care. Chu's cooking skills were solid. So we're looking at a bowl, and in it are, are three plastic bags that are tied very neatly, like a little top knot on it. Knot. Mm -hmm. 
we should explain the all-important plastic bag. Oh yeah, a key component of prison cooking. You know how in society you have a lot of bowls and pots and pans? Mm -hmm. Well, on the inside, you don't have that stuff. So you use plastic bags for food, pruno, and other (laughs) shit. (laughs) We got to talk about the pruno someday. Maybe not today. Another episode. One is filled with mushrooms and maybe oil? Uh, mushrooms and water, just and to rehydrate, water. because I bought some dried mushrooms and uh, I'm rehydrating them. Uh, that's the prep time. This is, the other bag is fungus. It's black fungus, uh, Chinese, I guess, delicacy. And I'm rehydrating both of them okay. so that I can cook with it later. And then tell us about your spice rack here. Uh, spices that I have is I have my soy sauce, uh, hoisin, uh, pepper, because um, Chinese sauces already has a lot of salt in it, so I really don't need it. Plus the soy sauce already has salt. I have uh, paprika and cayenne pepper and garlic pepper. Okay. And I have some mama noodles here with extra seasoning. Wow, I do really like this, this bagging technique. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Chu is sounding a little more confident than he did in the grocery store. Oh yeah, I was starting to think that this whole nice guy British Bake Off thing was really just an act. A bluff? We'll see. Chu, what are you doing? Uh, what am I doing? Are you modifying that hot pot? Maybe. (laughs) Nige, Mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons that incarcerated people love these old school hot pots. They're really easy to modify. Yep, there's a regulator in there, and its job is to make sure the hot pot turns off when it hits a certain temperature. But if you know how to remove it, you can keep things cooking in there as long as you want. Yeah, I knew a guy who could cook a whole chicken, like fry up a chicken. Wow. Deep fry. So... Yeah, those things were good. So, I do. Uh, you gotta take this call. Hold on, yeah. hold it. This is called jailbreak. An appliance. This is called a workaround. Oh. So he just took the bottom of the hot pot off. And, oh no, he's using the can opener. All right, let's go to the dude that's finished. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is still getting set up. And Jason, despite his nickname, Turtle, it looks like he's already finished. He had an instant meal. <laughs> I don't know what is left for him to do is just actually put the fish in the rice. Yeah, fish in the uh, the, the, oh, the other condiments, condiments Tell with us it. Tell about your condiments. Well, I got a little bit of mayonnaise. Got the hot ass sriracha. My lapines. Yes, nice. Chopped up already. And I got the shrimp uh, flavored noodles. What's the company? It brand? seemed like he was really embracing that cooking philosophy of just throwing things together and seeing how it comes out. I, I tried to give him some pointers, Nige. I, I did. You did, no doubt. Okay. So you got to do some stirring before that stuff burns? I just put it in there. You got to break the ri- rice chunks down and all kind of stuff. Like, bro, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Is that fish cooked enough? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to find out. The chef going to tell me. While we wait for Jason to figure out his fish problem, I want to introduce you to the homie Larry Davis. He's locked up in Tracy, and he was telling me about this competition. One of the package companies, those vendors that supply food to incarcerated people, was running for the best prison recipe. Oh, interesting. So in my mind, I had this idea of what I thought would be scrumptious, right? I said, man, if I can come up with a creation nobody ever thought about, I, I know I can win this, this contest. So Larry gets an idea, and it involves ice cream cones. They have two kind of ice cream cones. They have the sugar cones, and then they have the regular cones that we used to get ice cream scoops with the little bitty ones. So I ordered oysters, clams, brown rice, and a, a Dorito potato chips, mayonnaise, and cheese squeeze, and jalapeno peppers. Oh my God, E, where is this going? My friend Larry mixes all this stuff together. No, 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 no. I let it set for about two hours until it got kind of soft. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You scooped your spread up and put them in ice cream cones? In ice cream cones. And you know how you eat ice cream? Yeah. Instead of eating the ice cream, you was eating the spread in the ice cream cone. Delicious. 
Hello. How's it going? An hour later, our celebrity judge arrived. Yes, uh, my name is Gilbert Pilgrim, and I am a uh, professional cook. Both my mother and grandmother were very, very good cooks. And uh, I grew up in Mexico City. The meal was always a very important thing. We all had to be at the table and we ate together all the time. Uh, it was nothing fancy, but it was always homemade. Uh, Gilbert got his start the, uh, as the first intern at Chez Panisse, uh, the restaurant where California cuisine really started back in the 70s. He's now owner and executive chef at Zuni Cafe. Zuni is such a classic San Francisco restaurant. It's the first, like, in quotes, fancy restaurant I ate at when I moved to San Francisco in 1991. They have the mm. best chicken, and they still have it. we got to go there sometime. Gilbert walked around and met the contestants. An awesome Adam, leading the pack, showed off how in prison he would chop up vegetables using the lid of a tin can. Uh, I find that trying to use these plastic knives, there's no way that you'll be able to cut these vegetables that fine. So we're able to get canned goods in prison. So I found that using the top of the lid to cut any vegetable or cheese, anything, it just slices it like butter. But I mean, really, he worked like an hour, and a, maybe at least an hour and a half just getting stuff down to to then reconstitute it, mm -hmm. right? But in terms of, uh, of the time that it takes, we've been brainwashed to think that cooking is a chore, that it should take no time, that it should be immediate. Mm -hmm. But there is so much gratification when, like I love doing fava beans, mm -hmm. which you have the first pot and the second pot, because it, it calms you down. Yep. And a lot of people spend more time taking care of their car than they do taking care of their food that goes into their bodies. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's very tranquil just going through the whole process because it allowed me in my own little time and space in my head to just kind of zone out. And the cooking process for me used to be like therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Have you worked in a professional kitchen? Never. Because you know, when everything is working well, it's such a beautiful thing to see just in the quietness of focus. So it's not all hectic and people yelling? Not in my <laughs> kitchen, no. So there's no Chef Ramsay? No. <laughs> Chef Gilberto? <laughs> no. I love hearing that. I can see that there would be some therapeutic qualities to focusing on something like cooking when you're inside. Probably for some people. Uh, where, was your therapy in the eating and not the of cooking? Of course. <laughs> you see his gut. And just like on the outside, a shared homemade meal in a prison can really bring people together. Right. And Yaya had a story about that. There was a time at San Quentin when there was a lot of drama on the yard. You had several individuals on the yard who didn't like the state of affairs, right? People weren't getting along. People weren't talking to each other. And so their whole thing was to invite people to a spread, to have what we call the unity spread. They started planning. They started putting out the little communiques, the little kites, and the word of mouth. And so it started spreading like wildfires. What the unity spread consisted of was a potluck, so to speak. So you had burritos, noodles, oysters, cheese. You had all kinds of different things. Some guys may even brought tacos out, but you know, it was like, maybe 10 or 15 tacos, but it might have been 40 or 50 people. So, you know, people split those in half, and that was also a part of the camaraderie and the fellowship. But we bridged a lot of gaps that day. You know, I found out just by sitting here and having it spread that one person didn't like one person because he didn't speak to him one day. And it was merely because this person didn't see him, but because he had this perspective about this guy not liking him, he assumed something. I left that spread feeling like I was closer to a lot of individuals that I wasn't traditionally close to, then uh, it was really powerful. So spreads inside prison can help people resolve their differences and create community. Right. But this spread, on the outside, this spread is a cutthroat affair. Mm -hmm. There will be winners and there will be losers. That's coming up after the break. One of the odd things that I purchased was dragonfly dehydrated cucumbers. And when I asked him what he used that for, he says he used it to make like stir fries and things like that. Mashed potatoes. He has the garlic cheddar kind. Uh, five hostess jumbo muffins, banana and blueberry. And I added B complex um, on the list because of Corona. And that's it.
So, E, at this point, you and Gilbert and I had walked around. We looked at all the food. What was going through your head? I was thinking that Yaya was a real contender. I mean, his presentation was looking cool. Oh, yeah, he was actually surprising me. Definitely. He, he, he came with some old school hot pot tricks. Adam, his, his shit looked like it can be served in a restaurant or served in a, a tamale spot right oh, now. yeah. I mean, as you say, he is on point. He's on point. Jonathan, he went through some topsy-turvy type situations <laughs> a little <laughs> earlier, but he's coming back. And Jason. Yeah, we're crossing our fingers for Jason. Since there could only be one winner in the first annual Ear Hustle cook-off, we were going to have to make some hard decisions. So you, me, and Gilbert went inside to huddle. First of all, what are, what are some of your impressions? I'm very impressed, really. Uh, the, the thing that concerns me is that there has to be one winner. That shouldn't concern you. I hate that, too. <laughs> I hate that too, but there is one dish I don't want to, do not want to eat. Nobody want to eat turtle dish. It's horrible. Just say it. Just say it. It looks horrible. Say it. I'm also just worried the fish is not cooked. The fish was still swimming in that shit. <laughs> yeah, the fish that doesn't look cooked. So I'm glad. Uh, let's pick a straw and see who's going to test that. Who's going to taste that one first? I, 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 was, I just turned into a vegetarian, so. <laughs> we had to talk to Jason. So come on over here, bro. We got a suggestion. Call you back. Yeah, call her back. Is that your agent? No, that was his lawyer. <laughs> That's his lawyer about this meal. <laughs> so, here's our issue. Your fish is not um, cooked all the way. So, our request is, can you put it in a plastic bag and throw it in one of the buckets so it can oh, cook? Oh, cook more? Yeah. Some of the plating has begun. Oh, yeah. The presentation is happening. Nah. Yes. The food is ready. I am so excited. And first up, Yaya. It smells really good. And I like the color. Mm-hmm. All right. The rice is, is very good because you were not happy with the rice, but it's because it was minted rice, it didn't have the starched in it to hold the gravy. Wow, there's a nice sweetness. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. What is that? Um, secrets, trade secrets. Yeah, yeah, I think this is no delicious. There, I think I just saw your secret. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the secret was love. Yep. Yep. You know. Brown sugar. Yeah, absolutely. Brown sugar. Sure. I thought Yaya's dish turned out pretty good. Yeah, but the man to beat was over at the next table. Awesome matter. Okay, first of all, the appearance is really wonderful. There's garnishes on everything, and he added a little color. There's a little red on the rice. The texture on the tamale looks beautiful. It's so really professional. Yeah, it, look, it, look, it looks... Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to put the mic down. We're going to get into okay. this. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really getting excited for Jonathan Chu's dumplings. But he had run into some technical difficulties. I was going to make dumplings, and generally I had to let it sit so I could prove, and then it could build structure, but my dough is not building enough structure. So it's, it's falling apart when I did my test one. So is I'm it over... Start. Uh, needed? Uh, no, no, no. There's no. I have to actually put a lot of kneading into it, but I might have to start over. I'm yeah. Just, I'm just trying to channel the British Bake Off to figure out what's going on. But Chu pulled out some good old-fashioned prison ingenuity. An ear hustle classic, the workaround. Mama noodles with the side of zucchini and onion, and. And then my main protein is Chinese sausage, and there's some mushrooms and some um, fungus. Uh, That's good. It definitely has a little, has a little spicy. Now you went back for a second fork of, of Jonathan Chew's. A little salty. A little salty. A little salty. Yeah. That left one last dish, and Erlon, I wanted to be polite, so I let you go first. Polite, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yep. We still had Jason's fish dish. So I have. Jalapenos, jambalaya, okay, and I have salmon. Salmon, okay. My name is Erlon Woods, and I leave everything <laughs> to Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> he already took his uh, Pepto Bismol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mexican. I don't need to take it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Okay. All the time. I was born with Pepto Bismol. 
All right, judges. Okay, we're gonna go deliberate. I mean, you guys should enjoy the food while we deliberate. Y'all have fun. Y'all enjoy. We big bag. Oh yeah. Eat away. Eat away, hey. I'm happy to say, as our presence here today attests, the judges survived. We decided to give points based on taste, presentation, and creativity. The most you can get for each was four points. Uh, Yaya, uh, for taste, a four. Appearance, three. Uh, creativity, four. Yeah, ooh, y'all giving out. Y'all generous. I know, I was too high. Erlon, you were not that generous. I gave Jason a taste. I gave him a one. Appearance, I gave him a zero. I should have gave him a minus, minus one. <laughs> um, creativity, I gave him a half a point. I gotta say though, if we were giving a spirit award, Jason would be a contender because he was smiling and laughing the entire time. Jonathan Chu got awarded bonus points for scrambling to find a workaround when his dumplings didn't work out. Adam, I gave him four in all of them. Yeah, and I think if he could have put it in a corn husk thing and mm -hmm. been able to heat it up like that, yeah. it'd have been. And yeah. then, if we had brought mariachis, oh, we yeah. were serving and them, and, 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 and one of the margaritas, and I would have sung like a caracha. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, you're going to be surprised. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. here we go. Right. So, first, the judges approached John Yaya Johnson. Uh, you know, the, the bringing the food to your mom for me was very, very special because that is also the reason of why I got into cooking. And that keeping on to that memory is very important. Yeah, yeah, I really liked watching you cook and how careful you were chopping everything. Um, I really enjoyed that you thought about color, and I loved that the, the, the dish had that sweetness to it and then also a nice bite to it. So it was a really good surprise for me. Thank you. I'll say this. Roast beef was like one of my things in prison because it was like a... What was roast beef a can? Three, four? Four dollars. So this is like one of those luxury items but I would definitely say that, that that was one of those meals that do remind me of prison. So it was a little prison nostalgic, and I don't know if that's good or bad. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I thought the tamales were very good, and uh, the ingenuity of coming up with the method of uh, producing the masa, my grandmother would have been very proud of that. Jonathan, your uh, ingenuity in uh, coming up with a new dish after the first one didn't work is what life is all about, and it is what cooking is all about, and uh, it came out very, very tasty. Yeah. Um, I again also liked watching you make all the preparing all the vegetables. I thought you chopped everything nicely. The dish tasted delicious to me. Um, like I said, a little salty, but I I went back and had quite a few tastes. So. Nicely done. Jason, I thought uh, that you took uh, criticism when you were doing your prep very, very well, which is, uh, as a chef at a restaurant, is very nice to see. And the uh, final combination of flavors was very good, though a little too um, mashed up together. Mm -hmm. Bro, I'm speechless. <laughs> it's that good. It's that good. <laughs> and then, the moment of truth. Each one was standing behind their table, and each one was looking at us like, pick me, pick me. So, drum roll, please. <laughs> well, the winner of this contest started off when he first was asked to join, said he was going to win. And... Adam, you are the winner of the Ear Hustle first food cook-off. And womp, 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 wait a minute. So, with that, do you have anything to say? 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank Ear Hustle for allowing me to uh, showcase my skills. You know, uh, I'll be happy to share the recipe with anybody inside. Uh, it's a great recipe, and I hope you guys find the same joy and happiness in preparing it that it brings me. Definitely thank the guest judge. I was very honored to be with you. I, I thank you all for your generosity, you know, especially in, in these difficult times with COVID and now with the fires. It is very refreshing and very inspiring to see people in difficult circumstances come together and do something for good. So thank you. Indeed, appreciate it. If I could add one more thing to the list, it would probably be steak, like a nice big juicy steak. Fresh vegetables and actual meat, like real chicken, real steak. Fresh meat, that would be like a huge thing that I would want to do for him. Maybe like a napkin with my kiss imprint and, and maybe like has a little bit of perfume in it. Just so that, you know, when he sees that napkin, it's, it's a symbol of love. So maybe next year when the pandemic is over and we can go back in and visit our friends in San Quentin again, we'll do the second annual cook-off inside. In the meantime, though, we did want to check in with our co-host on the inside, Rasan New York Thomas. He was so excited to tell us about this new pizza recipe he'd been working on. So they sell these pizza crusts. And so I get tomatoes when they give it to us in the morning and I boil the tomatoes until the skin busts open. And then I, I cool them off and mash them up. And I put them inside a chili with no beans with a shredded beef. I put that in the hot pot, let that marinate, and that's my sauce. Then I take the um, hot pot and I turn the strainer upside down. I put the crust on top of the strainer. I put the sauce on top, you know, the tomato, chili, and shredded beef sauce. I put mozzarella cheese. And then I put chopped up summer sausage sliced like pepperonis for their beef sausages. And then I take the top of the hot pot. And I use that to make the steam melt the cheese. And it's freaking delicious. Did you invent that recipe? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I got the pizza crust by mistake in a package one time. And I was like, what the hell I do with this? And I just came together. And then one day I was trying to, like, melt the cheese and it just wouldn't melt right. And then I figured out if... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. That, that if I take the uh, top of the hot pot and cover the snout and the pizza with it, it would cause the steam to, like, um, go and melt the cheese real nice, make the crust nice and soft. It is good. That's New York-style pizza. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of it like that, but it actually is New York-style pizza. <laughs> Ear Hustle would like to thank Jason Samuel, Jonathan Chu, Adam Garcia, and yes, even Ear Hustle's producer, John Yaya Johnson, for participating in the first annual Ear Hustle Cookoff. Big thanks to guest judge Gilbert Pilgrim from Zuni Cafe in San Francisco, and also thanks and lots of love to Davia Nelson, who put the show in touch with Gilbert. Davia is the co-host of the wonderful Kitchen Sisters podcast, our partners in Radiotopia. And one more big thanks to friend of the show, Alicia Montero. Ear Hustle is produced by Nigel Poor, Erlon Woods, Razan New York Thomas, John Yaya Johnson, and Bruce Wallace. This episode was sound designed and engineered by Erlon Woods and Antoine Williams, with music by Antoine David Jossi and Rashid Zinneman. Amy Stanton edits the show, and Julie Shapiro is the executive producer for Radiotopia. Ear Hustle would like to thank acting warden Ron Broomfield. And as you know, every episode of Ear Hustle has to be approved by this guy here. This is Lieutenant Sam Robinson, the public information officer at San Quentin State Prison. And I've had the opportunity and the privilege to witness many of cook-offs or potlucks inside the prison, especially down in the newsroom where Jonathan Chu and Yaya both work. And I don't remember either of those guys really being involved. So I don't know if Adam went up against San Quentin's best when he won this last contest. Uh, definitely in the future when things are better, we'll have to replay this again. Anyway, with that, 
I will say I approve this episode. This podcast was made possible with support from the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, working to redesign the justice system by building power and opportunity for communities impacted by incarceration. Thanks, you two. Good looking. Ear Hustle is a proud member of Radiotopia from PRX, a collection of the best podcasts around. Hear more at radiotopia.fm. I'm Nigel Poor. And I'm Erlon Woods. Peace. So what you call this, dog? <laughs> yeah, I call it uh, uh, the ice cream call. Shit, so you got to give it a name. Radiotopia.